Element 12 is a special chapter because it's one of those few chapters where the prophet Mormon feels a need to, to comment on what's happening. But I think what he's doing here also is he's summarizing and he's helping, he's helping us to learn the lessons. So he's extracting out the lessons and he says, this is what happened and this is the lesson I think we ought to learn from what, what took place. Right? And for me, it also signifies uh, the significance of the events that took place before. How you know, significant these events were to a point that Mormon feels the need to to comment on them. Thus, we have be, we we can behold how false and also the unsteadiness of the hearts of the children of men. Right. So he says we can see. You know, he speaks about the hearts. Right. That the hearts of the children of men. Okay, we can see that it's unsteady, and I think if something is unsteady. You cannot rely on it, right? And he says we can see that. And contrast to that, he says we can see that the Lord in his great infinite goodness doth bless and prosper those who put their trust in him. And one theme that I've seen, you know, repeat itself throughout the reading of the Book of Mormon is what happens when we trust the Lord. And he repeats that when he says that you know, the Lord will bless and prosper those that trust in Him. Two things, the Lord and our hearts. Right? And He says our hearts are unstable, but when we trust the Lord, the Lord will bless and prosper us. Okay, and then He goes on to mention that, you know, uh, we may see at the very time when the Lord doth prosper His people, yea. Okay, then he goes mentions what that looks like to prosper them. And he says that he prospered them in the increase of their fields, their flocks, their herds, and in gold and in silver and all manner of precious things of every kind. Okay, and at sparing their lives, delivering them out of the hands of their enemies, softening the hearts of their enemies that they should not declare war against them. Yea, and in fine doing all things for the welfare. And happiness of his people so when we put our trust in the lord right the lord will bless and prosper us and he's giving us things that the lord can do to bless and prosper us right and i love that doing all things for the welfare and happiness of his people so the lord wants us to be happy and he wants to bless us but he requires us to put our trust in him right and in the time that they do harden then is the time that they do harden their hearts and do forget the lord their god and do tremble under their feet the holy one right so he says when the lord prospers and blesses his people and his people you know receive all these blessings at that very time, that's when now they will turn on him, right? That's when now they will forget him, forget the Lord, and tremble under their feet, the Holy One. So we learn here that this is the lesson we can learn from the chapters previous to this one, that when the Lord the Lord put, wants us to trust Him. And when we put our trust in Him, He blesses us. And when He blesses us, then we forget about Him. And we tremble under our feet, the Holy One. Right? And then the Lord will do His best to try to help us come back. But we've seen that that does not work. And that's why we learn that except the Lord doth chasing his people so except the lord that means there's no other option but the lord needs, needs to chasten his people okay except you don't visit them with death right so it has to be that extreme that the lord has to visit us with death all right and terror and with famine and with pestilence they will not remember him wow 
So when things are easy, life is good, we forget about the Lord. And we think everything that has happened is because of us, is because of our, of our intelligence. right? And the Lord has to actually put terror and death for us to be aware that, whoa, we need the Lord's help. We did not achieve all these amazing things by ourselves. And how foolish and how vain and how evil and devilish and how quick to do iniquity and how slow to do good are the children of men. How quick to hearken unto the words of the evil one and to set their hearts upon the vain things of the world. So remember when he started, he spoke about the unsteadiness of the hearts of the children of men. And we see here that, you know, children of men are foolish and are vain and are evil and are devilish. Right? Because of those things, they are quick to do iniquity and slow to do good. Right? How quick to be lifted up in pride. How quick to boast and do all manner of that which is iniquity. And how slow are they to remember the Lord their God and to give ear unto his counsels. To give, how slow to walk in wisdom's paths. Right? They do not desire that the Lord their God who hath created them should rule and reign over them, notwithstanding his great goodness and his mercy towards them. Now think about that, that the Lord wants to bless and prosper us, but we choose not to listen to him, but rather we choose to listen to the devil. Right? We don't we do not desire you know that he should rule and reign over us. Right? And, and and bless us with mercy. Right? And the question is why is that? Why is it this way? Right, and we learn that it is it is because of what it is because of pride. I think at the root of all this is pride, because we learn that how great is the nothingness of the children of men. So the thing that allows us, or to help to have the Lord rule over us, is when we come to acknowledge our own nothingness. But that's where the challenge is, because when we are at ease, when things go well, we tend to think, you know, we, we, are, we are amazing, like everything happens because of our own efforts. That's why you hear people always say, you know, I have, I have achieved all this because of my hard work, because I work so hard. That's why I've achieved everything that I've achieved, which for me personally, I don't think hard work is the only thing that helps you prosper. There's many people who suffer, who struggle, that work very hard. Right? You need opportunities. You need. You need to be blessed. To live in a in a society that can allow you to prosper. And those things are far beyond your control. You need you need things. You need a bank, for example. You need a bank that functions. So you can withdraw your money every month. You need, you know, car manufacturers who are honest. So you can buy a car from them and they can maintain your car for you. There's so many things that needs to work. And they're beyond your own control. Your hard work cannot get those things to work. That's why the key here is, oh, oh how great the nothingness of the children of men. When we understand our own nothingness, that's the key. Yea, even less than the dust of the earth. And then we see here the prophet Mormon goes deeper into helping us understand the importance of being nothing, the importance of obeying the Lord and how that is a state of blessedness when we allow the Lord to govern us and to rule over us and to command us. He says, Behold, at his voice, meaning the voice of the Lord, the hills and the mountains 
tremble and quake. By the power of his voice, they are broken up and become smooth, yea, even like unto a valley. Yea, by the power of his voice, doth the whole earth shake. Yea, by the power of his voice, doth the foundation, foundations rock even to, to the very center. Yea, and if he say unto the earth, move, it is moved. Yea, if he say unto the earth, thou shalt go back, that it lengthen out the day for many hours, it is done. And thus, according to his word, the earth goes back, and it appeareth unto men that the sun standeth still, yea, and behold, this is so. For surely it is the earth that moveth, and not the sun. And behold, also, if he say unto the waters of the great deep, Be thou dried up, it is done. Behold, if he say unto the mountain, Be thou raised up, and come over, and fall upon the, that city, that it it be buried, behold, it is done. And behold, if a man hide up a treasure on the earth, and the Lord shall say, Let it be accursed, behold, of the, because of the iniquity of him who hath hid, hid it up, behold, it, it shall be accursed. And if the Lord shall say, Be thou accursed, and no, and no man shall find thee from the time henceforth and forever, behold, no man getteth it henceforth and forever. And behold, if the Lord shall say unto a man, Because of thine iniquities thou shalt be accursed forever, it shall be done. And if the Lord shall say, Because of thine iniquities thou shalt be cut off from my presence, he will cause that it shall be so. And woe unto him to whom he shall say this, for it shall be unto him that will do iniquity, and he cannot be saved. Therefore, for this cause, that man might be saved hath repenteth been declared right so we learn here of the many examples we are given that the word of god is powerful the lord can command the mountains and the rivers and the earth itself and it obeys now we as humans we choose not to obey him that's why he cannot bless us and prosper us. That's why we are taught about. We taught we are, that's why we are taught about repentance. Because what is repentance? Repentance is understanding these these truths that we need the Lord. We need to obey Him, and when we tend to Him and we change our ways and follow His ways. That's what repentance is. That's why we say that, Therefore, blessed are they who will repent and hearken unto the voice of the Lord their God. So repentance means you choose to listen to the Lord the way everything else does, so that He can rule over you, so that you can be blessed and prosper. And the prophet Mormon says that, I would that all men might be saved. But we read that in the great and last day there are some who shall be cast out here, who shall be cast off from the presence of the Lord. Right? Because now, this is what he's teaching here. The importance of following the Lord and keeping his commandments and listening to him. And not thinking that we are above him or we can do as we please because when we do those things it will lead us to destruction and these are the lessons we have learned to this point and i think he says if it was up to him all men would be, would be saved but he knows that not all of men will be saved some will be consigned or be assigned to a state of endless misery because they choose not to trust the Lord, they choose not to hearken unto Him. And the pride cycle, I think individually we go through it, whether in a big scale or in a small scale. But ultimately, the lesson from the pride cycle is that whether we are prospering, whether we are going through challenges, we need to be as a child and submit to all things that the Father doth see fit to inflict upon us.
we need to allow the Lord to rule over us because therein lies, lies happiness, therein lies the state of blessedness. But when we choose to follow our own hearts, when we choose to do as we please, then we choose a path of, of endless misery. And I know that we can be blessed by just obeying the Lord and He will do all things for us to help us to be blessed. <laughs>